Want to learn the keyword research process that's driven millions in visits for clients like Asana, Intuit, Zapier, and more? Well, you come to the perfect place. This is going to be the complete guide to the keyword research process we use here at Siege to drive those rankings for all of our enterprise clients and high growth startups as well. If you like this video, we have other content just like it, tools reviews, content strategy in the SEO world, how to increase your website traffic, all the backbone of trying to move faster and write quickly. So make sure you jam that notification bell, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content just like this. So in this process, one of the first things we do is essentially not go to any keyword research tool, which is kind of ironic. The best way to do keyword research is to completely avoid it to start. So what I mean by that is the idea of doing audience research before you do any keyword research. If you're new to an industry or a company or a business, or even as a refresher from time to time, we suggest going and doing a deep dive on that business to really understand the mind of the customer and how they make buying decisions. So how can you go about doing this? A few examples. One, listen to sales calls. That's the best way to do it. Hear how customers describe their problems. That is probably also how they search for things. Look at form submits. How are they writing those things and describing them? Probably also how they're Googling them. Look at other details, actually talk to them, ask them questions directly how they might search for these problems to understand it further. There's also great sales tools today. If you have an enterprise program that will actually record the transcripts for all of your sales team's calls and give you patterns in that data, which is super powerful for understanding how people might search. So in total, you can see how this can kind of add up for you getting to know the business and the buyer and the customer. Then before you ever go to a tool and kind of leverage that, what we suggest is actually building a blank sheet spreadsheet and actually then acting like you're the consumer and writing in a lot of terms you would search for. In that context, you're hopefully an SEO, or even if you're not, pretend you're that consumer, Google things you might search for, don't even add data yet. And hopefully just go as far and as deep as you can think before you've exhausted that list for your company. From there, we suggest exploring keyword frameworks. So keyword frameworks to us are these common content types that actually are proven to drive conversion, always registering search volume. They're, it's kind of ironic, you go to these tools and you won't see any search volume, but because they're so clearly very bottom funnel, they're worth doing for almost every business. So what are these keyword research types? Examples would be product cost, product versus product, company versus company, keyword template, jargon in your industry, you versus your competitor, competitor alternatives, what is jargon? Those are all frameworks that very commonly are searched for in your vertical that are worth adding to that list to explore them further. And with this data in mind, you'll kind of have that initial base of terms without ever have gone to the keyword research tool. And why do we think this is so powerful? Well, one, uh, like this kind of comment or tweet uh, I shared a little bit ago that I think is a good way of thinking about this concept. Essentially, if you start with the keyword research tool, you'll find high difficulty terms that don't convert. If you start with audience research, you'll find low difficulty terms that do. Essentially, when you search for something like content, content marketing, you're literally getting sorted by the highest volume things by default. Every single person that does content marketing is gonna see that exact same list. When you actually put yourself in the mind of the buyer, you will do things like search things that aren't as obvious as content marketing in your industry. We're gonna search things like GPT-3. That's something you only know if you're a buyer and you're actually in the weeds of this industry that the most obvious SEO will not get or in that space as you might see. So that's a great starting point. You've got that initial list. From there, now you can go look at your competitors. Uh, definitely suggest looking at clear competitors and also content competitors. Now, they're not always the same thing, depending on the industry. If it's a newer, evolving industry, you may need to explore differently. So what you'll wanna do is Google some of these terms, see who's ranking, drop those in Ahrefs, go to top pages, export a lot of them, go to the big competitors, export a lot of those, and build a list of around 50 to 200 total topics in, in, in full. With this keyword list, you can now start adding data uh, that will further allow you to more intelligently prioritize content. So what are these elements? Well, we'll get into it uh, via the keyword opposition and benefit analysis. 
as we call it here at Siege. So each of these kind of fit into a process to be able to prioritize topics appropriately. So the first one is just a top keyword. So we like the top keyword because we like looking at overall topic opportunity. You don't wanna just look at search volume of one keyword because sometimes one page can rank for thousands of keywords. Sometimes it can only rank for 30. So based on that, we wanna understand the full landscape which we can't truly get just from the keyword itself. That said, the keyword is helpful because what we do with that is use it to frame the overall article. We anchor towards the biggest keyword in order to have the highest chance of ranking for the most relevant keyword for us. So that's why it's important to grab that, grab the search volume of that term just as an indicator for our knowledge. Also grab the keyword difficulty. You can use Ahrefs, Moz, your tool of choice to grab that difficulty score. From there, you can look at who's the most high ranking URL like you on the search results. So why I say like you, sometimes topics will have sales pages or home pages or Wikipedia that you aren't like. You're not gonna be able, be able to outrank them sometimes and it's not realistic to put their metrics into your sheet. So I would grab the, number, the ranking most like you, put it into the sheet in terms of the total traffic and the total traffic value of that page. That's gonna give you a good baseline for that content. And from there, you'll also get links to the top result or that same page. And what we're going for there is getting a directional indication of passive link intent for these topics. So keyword difficulty is often directional, sometimes actually one-to-one -one depending on what tool you're using. But essentially, this metric will give you a sense of if this starts ranking, might be a decent chance that it has passive link intent, which might not always be one-to-one -one with keyword difficulty. That can be helpful for driving those earlier in your strategy as you move forward. Finally, once you have all of these metrics, you also want to give each topic a relevancy score. So the idea of a relevancy score is essentially, is this something that I can talk about my product like essentially all through the article? Credit Gaetano Donardi, our video on that subject where he described this framework in the way he describes it. Essentially a three is where you could talk about your product the whole time. Two is some of the time. One is only can be sparingly mentioned in the topic. That's a good way of thinking about the relevancy score. For example, Siege here, at content, market, uh, content marketing agency, we might have social media statistics that's sort of relevant to us, but it's not a three on the level. It's like, we don't offer that as a service directly. We sort of indirectly impact it, but it wouldn't be terrible to have on our site. So it's probably a one relevancy score. Comparatively, content marketing is a topic very obviously a three relevancy score for us. So this will take those traffic value metrics and topic value metrics, and then it will multiply it accordingly, essentially allowing the most relevant stuff to bubble to the top. Traffic value is what people are bidding on that same keyword topic according to Ahrefs or SEMrush. This is useful, but if you're a new startup and you're in a, or an adjacent industry, you can't monetize the same way, you wanna adjust these numbers qualitatively. So essentially all this data, you now have it, you've done it for 50 to 200 topics, you now have the ability to calculate a full keyword opposition to benefit score. So what that is, is essentially traffic value divided by the keyword difficulty gives you that score. You can also multiply it by the relevancy to further refine it, which is our very strong recommendation to give you a strong score. Final step of that is a scope per asset. So what you wanna do is scope each asset, sometimes a calculator, not sometimes all the time, a calculator is gonna take a lot more time than a very simple roundup. That's gonna adjust the score. If it's eight times the effort, you probably wanna make sure it's eight times the reward. So you would weigh that accordingly and now you have a keyword list to basically work off of for your program. So with that scope, you'll now have the ability to essentially have a full list that you can prioritize accordingly based on the score. The idea is that essentially, you'd be able to rank for things quickly, low difficulty topics, ladder up to more difficult topics over time. Although this, this is still a great thing that you probably could do well just simply executing quantitatively, we'd also suggest prioritizing based on things like that passive link intent score, getting a sense for that, content calendar, uh, interest to consumers, can you scale out these concepts? All of those are worth considering in keyword research, but essentially this is the full meat of an effective content strategy, is doing this deep dive where you're considering relevancy, you're doing audience research, you're getting a big sample size of topics, that's important to make sure you have enough data. Some industries might just have 50, others might have 1,000. Your mileage may vary, but I, I suggest being as exhaustive as you can to be 
highest impact and you deploy this appropriately, very confident uh, you'll see great results for your business. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let us know your favorite strategies for keyword research in the comments.